Shot. That's four runs. He's up the 100 for England after 25 overs. Two for 100. This time O'Donnell comes in. Oh, he smashed that one away to mid-wicket. Beautifully played by Broad. That won't be cut off. Into the boundary fence it goes. He certainly is a magnificent timer of the ball. That was pitched up on leg stump and went flying away down to the mid-wicket boundary. Dean Jones, who's pretty quick, went running away after it, but uh, he wasn't quick enough to cut it off. Have a look at Jones go. Came in there right at the end and whack into the boundary fence it went. This is a lightning fast outfield. Desperate lunge there by Dean Jones. That's high into the outfield. It's going to be caught and it's dropped. What a bad miss in the outfield. Ken McRae, the fielder, getting around well, getting both hands to it. And that was a straightforward catch, but it just about sums up the way the Australians have fielded today. Yes, there's no way in the world that an international cricketer should drop one of these. That was hit away high and wide. It went miles in the air, and it was for that reason that Ken McClay could get around. He had to make a fair bit of ground. He got there easily, but his hands were rigid. The ball bopped straight out of him. And now it's Richie Benno with him, Ian Chappell. Next turning. And that's got to be out. Brilliantly done. Well, it had to be the captain. He wasn't looking around either. It would have been a difficult one for Ward to take, but uh, Border was careful to take aim and then just threw down the stumps. That's what Australia needed to get rid of Chris Broad. Hit to the left-hand side of Alan Border, his natural throwing hand, and Chris Broad well short of the line. He was the man who hit it, also made the call, so he only has himself to blame. The third England wicket down with the score at 150. Ian Botham comes to the crease now to take the place of Chris Broad. The batsman crossed there with Broad trying to make his ground at the non-striker's end. Three for 150 now. We're into the 36th over. Very important moment for Alan Border and his team. Field is very fast. It was beautifully placed by Lamb. That's not a good over for Australia. 11 came from it. 3 for 163. Whitney is going to come on. When he hits them, they stay hit. 3 for 176. Is Bruce Reed bowling to Lamb? Four runs. And 50 to Alan Lamb. Now, there's a good way to come back to form. Hasn't been a good touch in the test, but uh, my word, he's played well today. Here's Whitney. There it goes, there's a man down there, it's McClay, he's dropped one, he won't get this one because it's six. It's a beauty over Long on. 27,000 people cheer as the champion hits Whitney out of the attack at three for 217. No doubt Michael Whitney will replay this one. He's bed tonight, he'll sit back there and think what may have been had he not bowled that no ball. What a great catch by the guy in the blue shirt. That was beautifully caught there in seat number three. The run rate now up to five. With, importantly, seven wickets in hand. Well, Simon Davis could be described as a run miser. He did a great job for his country last year against India and New Zealand. But uh, just about the, uh, I'd say the ultimate problem now is to see both of them on strike. Well, that's... Oh, what a shot. They've scored 20 off the last two overs. 
Simon Davis bowls a good half volley right on middle stump and he splits mid off and long on. Superb stroke. Well, just an idea of the power in this shot. Mid off and mid on are only about 25 metres apart and they're not even in sight. As Tommy goes again, can he get it? McRae's the man, he's had a rough day. He knocks, he doesn't get it, he kicks it over the fence. Four more. Both of it his best. This game man, Ken McClay, to go thrusting the size ten and a half in front of a drive like that. He's really travelling across the grass again. Down the track. Hits straight. Full power. And out goes the foot. Had that one cracked him on the ankle, I think the church bells would have been ringing. The sight screen in danger here at the Wacker. Both are hitting perfectly straight. This one's gone down as a man there. O'Donnell misses it. Dribbles. Not into the fence. A half chance I'd pass that. Very difficult one, but it was certainly in there for a long time. O'Donnell bravely dive forward, but his hands to it, trickled through. Ten runs off, three balls. Not quite straight here, a valiant attempt to grab that by O'Donnell. He's a pretty good outfielder. Botham, luck running his way. Luck favours the brave. Full pitch, there it goes. That's four more, 27,000 people and the commentators stand up. What a performance. Great hitting by the great all-rounder. Well, I think I'll stand up too, Bill. Union Jack's going everywhere here at the Wacker. The light's not turned on yet, but the spotlight certainly here on this man, Ian Botham. Cricket needs a man like this to keep playing. And that's 53. You don't have to run for that, Ian Botham. That is 40 metres back. One of the all-time great knocks in one day international cricket here at the Wacker. The crowd standing to their feet. What a great effort by the great all-rounder. Well, you dream about bringing up a 50 with a 6 or a 100, and both of them was going to do it right from the very beginning of this over. A standing ovation. He has really worried the spectators straight here at the Wacker. On the left-hand side of the side screen, on the right-hand side of the side screen, and that one, 30 rows back, and here we go again. It's a ball safe, it'll split the gap. That'll go for six more. What a hit, what an over for England. Not so for Simon Davis. Irving Rose and Waters Red Pen's gone berserk. Three fours and two sixes for the great all-rounder. Three for 252. Reed. That's out. Yes, Reed strikes. Alan Lamb caught behind the end of the fine innings. Bruce Reed and Zura dismiss Alan Lamb for a fine 60 odd. A wicket just at the right time. Good performance by Reed, but to be honest, the both of assault probably stopped the momentum of Lamb a little bit. And we see Zora take the catch. He's third today. A little bit tight for room there. Not the ideal ball to be trying to glide. But no one in slip. It was on. He paid the penalty. Mike getting to the crease. Four for 256. Stephen Waugh. Oh, he's hit that to over point. That'll be four more. There's nobody down there. And this is a batting exhibition of the top order. And that shot's not in the coaching manual. He stepped back towards the square leg umpire to make room for himself. His former county teammate, Viv Richards, a very good exponent of this shot. Off leg stump, one or two bounces <laughs> over point and into the fence. Well, what an extraordinary knock we're seeing here. Out, he's gone, the end of a great innings. The crowd ball, both of out for 68. Port Zura, bold wall. A magnificent short innings, a standing ovation, great entertainment. Well, it's difficult to put into words uh, just how good a knock, how important a knock this one is to England in this vital match here. The West Indies shock loss yesterday, the day before. 
and Galuzza will front up to the mighty West Indies. But Botham shows the bat, acknowledges the crowd. He's got to walk through the space. He hit two magnificent sixes on the onside. Another one over mid-off. And we just saw that boundary through point. He gave the bat the ball of the charge. And there it is. Well, a congratulations. He's come a long way to see that knock. He'll never, ever forget it. He certainly won't, Max, and the standing ovation, and rightly so, as we see Stephen Moore pitch short, both of them was after him, got the edge, Zura did the rest, and a slight relief for the Australian team, but he certainly gifted that run rate up to 5.51, in one of the best hitting exhibitions you will ever see. Two overs to be bowled. Reed to bowl his tenth and final over. Comes into wicketkeeper Jack Richards. No ball. Flips that square, just the sink. England looking at a total 280. Get 15 runs off this final two overs. It's been a great batting exhibition from the very first point.